So in this video, part two of our color technique, tinting technique, we're gonna do the fun part. We get to color. We're gonna take our design that we have traced out on our fabric and we're gonna color it in. So why don't we go and get started? And as I'm setting everything up, why not hit that subscribe button and that notification bell? So you know the next time I upload. And you're probably wondering who I am. Hi, I'm Jackie with Jackie Russell Creates, where we talk about everything quilting. I give tips, tricks, and techniques so you can conquer that next quilting project. So let's get started coloring and tinting and bringing back those childhood memories of our snowmen. So now we're on to the fun part. But there's a couple things that I forgot to mention of supplies you need. You're going to need a lot of paper towels. You're going to need a cotton ball or a Q-tip works best. And you're going to need your iron. So I'm just laying my pitcher on the sandpaper. And here you can see where I just put a dot in his hat. And that is the center of an X. I just put dots down the buttons because that's going to be French knots. So on this one, I have just dots up here for the berries and then for the little leaves that don't get colored in. I did add in the bird's feet that I was talking about earlier. <clears throat> so now that you have it designed and it's on your fabric, we're going to take our white crayon. This is where I said if you need you may want to get a box of just plain white crayon. And you're going to color. I color in a circular motion. The whole design that needs to be colored. So I'm going at the hat. And because you have the sandpaper, it does give, like t uses your crayons a, a lot more. But it helps it from sliding, from sliding around, which you don't want it to do. And then the white is just kind of helping the crayon be more pigment, I guess. A little darker. You necessarily don't have to do the white. It just will fade a little, a little more once we seal it into the fabric. So the white is kind of just like our base coat. And I know you can't see it on the camera, but it's kind of giving it a tingy color. So you kind of know where you have colored. You're just adding the white to anywhere that you're going to add more color. And I go in a circular motion. That way you don't have streaks of going, you know, when you go up and down or side to side.
And this, the white does not have to be 100% perfect. But you want the majority of your design colored in. I am using the 320 grit sandpaper. It is finer than the 220. If you want more texture on it, then I would go with the uh, 220. And so now he's all colored in on the white. So you're going to take your other color. So we're going to go with an orange for his nose. Okay, so I have the yellow orange that I'm just going to color in his nose with. And then we're going to tint. And just take a little darker crayon and go around for say the edges. I'm a painter so I use my fingers. But you can blend in you know, if you want it a little darker, just keep going over the area. Let's see. Maybe we'll have a red hat. And I'm going to leave it. I always start with the outside and then kind of fade it into the center to give a highlight or light directional of light so it's always lighter around the center So let's say you didn't have the darker or the bigger box of crayons. So you didn't have the different tones. You could always just continue with the same color. So we start with the hat. And so if I want, you know, you just keep going over that same section to give it the darker look oh. do his gloves here And so I want it darker around the edges. So we're just going to go around those one more time just to help darken it up. We'll go ahead and do this glove.
Now, what you can do is set it in. So you just take your napkins and you just kind of press those crayons and you want the napkins because it's going to bring up some of the color and so you just want to make sure that when you're setting the color in it's not getting on any other fabric or anything and you have to set the crayon in or it will like rub off You don't want steam while you're setting your crayon. And so now that is set in and you can kind of see on the paper towel here where the red bled, I guess. And so you want to keep going until your whole design is colored in. And so, let's say, let's go with the, so I'm going to make this like a wood sign. And color it in, highlights in our shadows, and I like to set periodically. And then I also, if I'm not going to finish the project all at one time, I like to set it so then I can, um, it's not going to get onto any other fabric that it may be being stored with. So here I'm just adding a little bit of darker brown to give some green texture to it. Maybe some knots, little darker areas for some knots. And then I'm going to set that in. Especially if you're working on a big piece you'll want to set the different things so you don't smear your picture. So as you saw, I was working up here first and if I didn't set this and come down to here as my sleeve runs across it, it will smear it. So like on the snowman, he's white, but we still need to give him some dimension. So I'm just gonna lightly take some gray or even a light blue and kind of go around the edges to give a shadow effect. So you know there's going to be like a shadow underneath his coat. So just give a little shadow there. And underneath the sign because you know when he's holding it up there's going to be a shadow across the bottom. A little bit here on his arms, around his face here. And once again, I'm going in that circular motion on camera. It may look like I'm just going back and forth, but I'm making little circles as I go around. 
And then I'm going to add a little of the gray under his nose. Give him a little shadow there. And then around the cuffs as well because I'm going to leave them white. And then the pom-pom on the hat. And I'm going to set those colors in. If you're doing a small project, you can do the whole thing at once. You can take your Q-tip and blend them in. I'm using a cotton ball. Normally, I'll be honest, normally I'll just use my finger because I, like I said, I am a painter and that's how I blend. So, I'm going to finish this up and then we'll do the others. <clears throat> so here I'm just going to show where you can add multiple colors to one section. So I love bluebirds. Blue Jays. I feed them in my yard. And so I'm just using multiple different colors of blue right to mimic the different shades of blue that my Blue Jays kind of have. And you know, each Blue Jay has its own characteristics. You know, you can just give a little bit of dimension and by just adding a little streak into the blue jay or into the and then I just kind of like to go in and blend it a little bit. So I use five different blues on these blue jays, or these birds. Just to give them a little depth and dimension. So that's another way that you can, you know, color your design. Use as many colors as you want and shading to give the color dimension that you want on your bird or on your 
pitcher. You don't have to be just your birds. <laughs> and then set it in and move on to the next section. So now that we have our snowmen all colored, now we need to decide what we're going to do. But that's for the next video. So I hope you had fun and enjoyed bringing back those inner kid in ourself and pulling out those box of crayons and coloring and creating these cute snowmen. Until then, happy quilting my friends.